All right, y'all. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is NFL Week 14. Thank you for listening to the Dark Sports Podcast. I'm going to start off by doing a recap of the Amazon Thursday night football game. That was the Patriots at the Steelers. Then I'm going to talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars went to Cleveland. Chargers at Baltimore Ravens. And then I'm going to wrap up talking about Tennessee Titans Monday night football game at the Miami Dolphins. And then maybe a little preview of the game coming up this week. So starting off, the Thursday night football game. This is a game where in the last podcast, I was saying that I was not looking forward to watching. This is going to be a bad game because you have two teams who are doing really bad. Two faded glory teams is what I called them. Meaning teams that just remember not that long ago when they were on top and winning Super Bowls. Everybody had hoodies and hats and everything else. Now when you walk around... You don't see anybody wearing Patriots paraphernalia or Steelers black and yellow hats. But, hey, somebody had to lose this game. I thought that it was going to be the Patriots just because they had basically bottomed out. I think they hadn't scored in, like, the last two or three games or something else like that. But here we go. Surprise. They seem to remember that they were an NFL football team. And by halftime, they were up 21-10 to on Pittsburgh. And I just really figured Pittsburgh was going to be able to come back. They had a lot of times, but just, yeah, mistakes. I mean, Steelers are looking pretty bad. This was a bad game to watch. I called for Pittsburgh with the home field advantage. I was wrong. But, hey, that pretty much cements it. Pittsburgh is pretty much out of here because they're in the same division as the next team I want to talk about, which is the Cleveland Browns. Now, this Cleveland Browns-Jacksonville game. So, after Kansas City lost last week, Everybody was looking at this because now Jaguars were like the number one in the AFC. People were like, okay, yeah, this is the team to beat. Well, not so fast as we saw here. Cleveland Browns, man, this is a feel-good story. For anybody who likes feel-good NFL stories, this is a feel-good story. Speaking about faded glory, Joe Flacco, I think he won the Super Bowl with the Ravens in 2012. This dude literally was on his mom's couch watching football games a few weeks ago and here he is back in the game playing for Cleveland I mean for those who don't remember Joe Flacco I think he got fired after that Super Bowl that's how bad he was but the Ravens defense was so good they were able to win but hey Joe Flacco who threw a major pick last week here he goes he's back was looking good maybe he was just a little bit rusty the you know Cleveland the dog pound was out he was looking good Trevor Lawrence, man, they were just chasing his ass around all day. Trevor Lawrence running for his life, just could not get away. Overall, I watched this game, and I was like, are you serious? The act- Cleveland Browns actually ended up beating the number one Jacksonville Jaguars team, and they have so many injuries on this team. It really is ridiculous. This is a feel-good story. If you don't like feel-good stories, then I don't know why you watch the NFL, but Cleveland Browns, here they are. Living right, give a shout out to the man upstairs. Hey, when you're living right, good things will happen. 27 to 31 at Cleveland. This is now the team to watch. But hold up. So now let's talk about the probably up until the Monday night football game, what I was calling was the best game of Sunday, which was the Baltimore Ravens game. Now, let's make a couple things clear here. Efford, he looked good. He looked really good, better than he has in a long time. However, just that smothering Baltimore Ravens defense, they were able to just get the points that they needed. Lamar Jackson was Lamar Jackson running around. They couldn't tackle him. Errol Donald tried to. This is a game that went to overtime, and I didn't think it was going to end like that. But before anybody gets too excited, let me tell you something. Yes, the walk-off uh, return for the game winner was great, but... As a betting man, you cannot count on the Baltimore Ravens. You just cannot count on the Baltimore Ravens. So while this was a very exciting and interesting game to watch, and now Baltimore is like at the top in the AFC, you really cannot trust Baltimore. The reason why I say that is because I was talking about the previous game, right? Cleveland, and I was talking about Baltimore. So let's look at this graphic. You'll see right now, Ravens are 10-3. and three. Browns are 8-5. and five. So the next game, Cleveland is going to host Chicago Bears. This is going to be a gritty game in the North on a cold Sunday. Anything could happen. But then, 
Look at this. The Ravens have to play the Jaguars. Cleveland just finished beating the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now the Ravens have to go to Jacksonville. And the Jaguars are not going to be happy about this. This is going to be a shootout. Uh, I told you, you can't trust Baltimore. So I'm probably going to go with Jacksonville on that game. But yeah, all of a sudden, this division is looking really interesting to me. And the Browns are looking good. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the Monday Night Football game. Now, this was a game that turned out to be the best. When you get down to like December, you start getting really good games. And this game turned out to be the best game I saw on Monday Night Football. I didn't want to watch this game because I was like, the Tennessee Titans, they let me down. Beginning of the season, I had them picked to win their division. They're in the Cellular division. And I was like, going to Miami, this is going to be just a Tyreek Hill highlight reel. But... If you just fast forward to this game, if you watched it, go back to the fourth quarter and you just see a lot of mistakes. Derrick Henry lost a fumble. There was another fumble. They basically gave up 14 points all of a sudden. But somehow, I mean, that's the thing about the NFL. Somehow Levis got it done. I mean, this dude was able to bring them back two scores and... We learned a couple things in this game. Number one, the Dolphins without Tyreek are not the same team. We know that. Just like I told you, San Francisco without Debo and Christian McCaffrey, not really that much to worry about. But this was a really amazing comeback. If you haven't watched this game, just watch the fourth quarter of it. Me and my son watched this game, and I was like, this is what I'm telling you. In the NFL, anything could happen. Tennessee... Remember the Titans with a one-point victory upset over Miami. I actually won some money on this game because I had some loose change in the couch. I just threw it in there. So shout out to the Titans. Yes, you lost me money on the division, but I got some of it back here. I'm happy about that. And then finally, I'm going to talk about tomorrow's game, the Chargers at the Raiders. So these are two bad teams who are in the cellar of the AFC West with Kansas City. Man, that Raiders game, jeez, I don't think they even, they couldn't even score a point in the last game. This is going to be an easy win. I'm going with Austin Ecklers and the formerly San Diego Superchargers, now the LA Chargers. Because I have to pick a team, I'm going to say Chargers on this game. But uh, this is not going to be like a bulldoze game. Chargers, final answer. That's my pick. So that's what I got for week 14 NFL. Let me know what you think. As usual, thanks for listening. I'll be back next week with the next episode. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Enjoy some football. Thanks for listening.